we have just witnessed the elections to the Chennai Corporation and the election of a new mayor. This is a great process, a democratic process. But what makes it most interesting is that this was an election to one of the oldest civic bodies in the world. The Chennai Corporation, once known as the Corporation of Madras, is one of the oldest civic bodies and it dates back to 1688. In fact, when it was instituted, it was the second oldest corporation in the entire British Empire after the London Corporation. The charter for the creation of a corporation was given one year earlier in December 1687. But by the time the actual charter was received in Madras, nine months had gone by. And therefore, the corporation dates itself to September 28, 1688. The actual receipt of the document was celebrated with a huge procession, complete with elephants, horses, dancing women, pipers and drummers. The charter was taken to Fort St. George and the corporation was formally inaugurated on September 28, 1688. Today, we talk about mayors and councillors. It is interesting to see that that original charter incorporated all these conditions. It even went to the extent of saying that it is very likely that all the councillors appointed will be Englishmen and that it should not be so that Madras as a city has got Portuguese, Armenians and Indians and they should all be given representation on the corporation's council. The first council therefore had three Indians on it. Imagine in 1688. At that time, the councillors were divided into two groups, the aldermen and the burgesses. There were 19 aldermen and 60 burgesses and there was a mayor heading the whole group. Today, we associate the mayor with certain ceremonial robes. We observe that the mayor wears a red robe or a purple robe on certain occasions and a black robe on certain other occasions. It is interesting to see that the original charter included all these as well. It was decreed that on special ceremonial occasions, the mayor should wear red or scarlet and on other occasions, he, should wear, he or she should wear black. In addition, the mayor also wears what is called the mayoral chain across his or her shoulders and there is an orderly who walks in front carrying what is called the mayoral mace which is a heavy stick like object made of silver. This gave rise to yet another very interesting tradition associated with the High Court of Madras. In fact, that is the only High Court of India where that tradition is still observed. And what is that tradition? If you at all go to the High Court, you will observe that the judges of the High Court, when they are walking to and fro, in front of them, there will be a peon or an orderly who will be carrying a staff and pushing everybody out of the way. That was because the mayor has exactly the same tradition in the city. And in 1726, the mayor became responsible for the administration of justice in Madras. The mayor's court operated from 1726 to 1744 and therefore the sight of the mayor sitting as a justice and walking with the mayoral staff being carried in front of him was a common sight. When the Supreme Court of Madras came into existence, that tradition of the judges being preceded by the mace was incorporated into the judiciary and later in 1862, when the Supreme Court of Madras gave rise to the High Court of Madras, the same tradition continued. You will not find this practice in any other High Court of India. The first mayor was not an Englishman, not an Indian. He was an American by birth. Yes, it is true that the Americas were still British colonies at that time. But Nathaniel Higginson was born there, later took employment in the East India Company and came to Madras as a company employee and it was he who became the first mayor. Thereafter, till 1919, we had a method whereby the mayor and the councillors were all nominated. The aldermen and burgesses were renamed councillors in 1919 and the mayor himself was renamed as the president. 
That year, elections were held to the corporation on a limited franchise and Indians were also allowed to contest and the first Indian to become the president of the corporation was Sir Pitti Thyagaraya Chetty. T Nagar, the T in T Nagar commemorates Thyagaraya Chetty and even today you will find a marble statue of him fronting Ripon buildings which is the headquarters of the corporation of Chennai. In 1933, the post of president was once again named as that of mayor and the first man to hold that office was Kumara Raja M.A. Muthaya Chetiar of Chetinad, later Raja Sir M.A. Muthaya Chetiar. Muthaya Road, which runs just next to Ripon Building, commemorates him. Muthaya Chetiar was the eldest son of the business baron Raja Sir Annamalai Chetiar of Chetinad. Raja Sir Annamalai had three sons. Muthaya was the eldest, Ramanathan was the second and Chidambaram was the third. It is a matter of unique record that all three became mayors of Madras. Muthaya Road, as I said, commemorates Muthaya. MRC Nagar is Mayor Ramanathan Chetiar Nagar and that commemorates Ramanathan. M.A. Chidambaram is remembered with the stadium in Chepok. As to how that stadium came, that is a very interesting history which we will look at in a subsequent episode. Then came a very significant contribution of the corporation, namely the digging of a giant reservoir for the city. The history of Chennai has always had to do with struggles with water. It has either been drought or flooding. In recent years, we have witnessed a lot of flooding. But for almost 300 years, Chennai's water history has to do with a lot of scarcity. And it was S. Satyamurti, the freedom fighter, who as mayor in 1939 first came up with the proposal that a giant reservoir should be created for the city in a place called Pundi. He took the permission of the British government at that time and work began. In 1944, the reservoir was completed. By then, Satyamurti had died in the Quit India movement struggle. Later, after independence, that Pundi reservoir was named Satyamurti Sagar and it played a very important role in quenching the thirst of our city. In the 1950s, we got our first woman mayor, Tara Cheryan. Much later, in the 1970s, we got our second woman mayor, Kamakshi Jairaman. This year, we once again have a woman mayor in R. Priya. In 1972, the corporation of Madras was faced with what was known as the muster roll scandal. That was when it was discovered that the actual employee register of the corporation was full of fictitious names and salaries were being paid out to those people which actually went into the pockets of the councillors and several of the corporation employees. An inquiry was conducted, the corporation council was dissolved and the administration of the city came under a special officer. Since then till 1995, there was no corporation council in this city. In 1995, elections were held once again and Mr. M. K. Stalin became the mayor of the city. Thereafter, elections were held till 2015 and then we had a gap once again and now we have had the elections, we have a new council and we have a new mayor. The headquarters of the Chennai Corporation is the Ripon Buildings. In the initial years, the corporation operated out of Fort St. George and then in the 19th century, it shifted to Erebalu Chetty Street in Georgetown to a building designed by Norman Pogson, the architect. Thereafter, in 1909, land was allotted in a corner of People's Park close to Central Station and the foundation stone was laid by Lord Minto, the then Viceroy of India. The actual contract for the construction was given to P. Loganada Mudaliar and the design of the building was by G. S. T. Harris, who was then the consulting architect to the government of Madras. In 1913, at a cost of 7.5 lakhs of rupees, the building was completed and it was inaugurated by Lord Harding the then Viceroy of India. 
Since then, it has remained the headquarters of our corporation. Why even the corporation helpline is 1913, which basically commemorates the year in which Ripon Buildings was inaugurated. This then is the history of our corporation in brief. Let us see how this new elected council and the mayor work for the benefit of our city. It is our responsibility to watch over their functioning. See you soon. If you like this episode, do subscribe to this channel. And also, if you want any specific questions on history answered, please do post them in the comment section below. I will take them up and answer in due course of time. Bye for now. Thank you.